it was a hot Friday afternoon in Phoenix, 109 in the shade, and the air conditioning in my truck doesn't work. I'd been up early working on some legal papers for two civil rights lawsuits I've got going. I had just filed the papers at the federal court building downtown and was looking forward to getting out of the heat and quitting for the day. But my lord had other plans. As I was driving, I saw a man slumped on the ground under a bench at a bus stop. It looked like he may have had a heart attack or passed out from the heat. Worse, the sun was beating on him and it must have been 120 or 130 degrees on the ground. I confess that at first I drove past, thinking someone else would take care of him. But I turned to check up on him, and so did another lady. To make a long story short, we offered him a jug of water, but he was drunk and didn't want help from us. Someone had called 911 and the fire department came and took over. Again, thinking I was finished for the day, I just wanted to get out of the heat. But the lady who stopped to help wanted to talk. Maybe you've asked the same question she asked. Maybe these answers will help you. I'm so glad that our um, firemen and police department help people like that. We have a very compassionate society. I don't want to shock you, but when people drive through flash floods and stuff, I think, you know, I'm not going to go rescue them if you're that dumb. And if they climb mountains and they break their leg, well, all right, that's personal responsibility. A guy like this, you know, I don't know his story. He clearly wasn't beat up or anything like that. Um, if he chooses to get drunk, I, I mean, yeah, I stopped like you did, but... Uh, so intellectually you feel one way and in your heart you feel another. Well, I wanted to make sure, again, I mean, where I draw the, I have to gather enough data. If I find that he's there because he's been drinking, then that's his own damn fault. Uh, if somebody beat him up or if he had a heart attack, that's what I thought. It was maybe he slipped. If, you know, he looked when I first drove by. I thought, I thought he fainted, fell off, whacked his head. Now you got to do something. Uh, yeah, to help him. Yeah. But uh, when I came by, I asked him if he was okay. He said, yeah, you could just smell the alcohol. Are you a professor? No. You just seem like an academic type. No, uh, I'm an engineer by vocation. I'm obsolete. I'm a Christian missionary, which may surprise you. But uh, again, you know, this is what God says. It, 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 yeah. it, it, there's a time for mercy and compassion. But, uh, and we are to... I mean, Cain's problem was he said, I'm my brother's keeper. And the implied answer is, well, to some degree, yes, we are. But that doesn't mean that I, as a Christian missionary, my duty is to warn people about hell. It's not to grab them and save them, excuse me, and save them from going there. If that's where they want to go, okay. <laughs> my job is to warn them. Don't go there. He's down with my son. He has that same Christian belief and that same assurity. And I've always, I've always searched for it, but I have to say that I think that you guys that feel that way are taking a grain of sand and explaining all the oceans and beaches in the world. How do you mean? Well, it's just that even if you feel certain, you can't say you really are. Which what? What? We are what? Christian. Oh, say? All the religions. I mean, we're all just guessing what's going to happen when you talk about hell. No. Well, and here, okay, well, and you have a good question. How do you know? Because you've got the three major religions. You've got Islam, uh, which right now, you know, is pressing to be the major religion. And those guys are so fanatic, they'll drive themselves in the buildings thinking that they're going to see 72 virgins. And, you know, none of us think they're going to see 72 virgins. And so the question comes down to, well, how do you know? We'll talk to an awful lot of Christians who will give you what I think is a stupid answer. I call, it, I call them Santa Claus Christians. Well, you just got to believe. Yeah. No, that's wrong. <laughs> you don't just got to believe. If it fundamentally comes down to, let me ask you this about O.J. Simpson. You think he killed his wife or not? He did. Did you see him do it? No, but I know he did. How do you know? I, I agree with you. I know. We all know, right? Because of the evidence. Okay? We weren't there. I wasn't there. We don't have eyewitnesses, but there's enough evidence that I would call the, I would execute the man for murder. Okay. That's called forensic. How do we know that George Washington crossed the Delaware? Were you there? Was I there? No. We don't. But enough people with it. It comes down to this guy named Jesus. He claimed to be God in the flesh. He said they were going to kill him. 
and for three days he would be buried, and on the third day he would come to life again. If that's true, if that happened, then he is who he said he was, and you should believe what he said. If it's not true, then you should be Jewish, or you should be Muslim, or you should be nothing, because he lied. And that's fundamentally what it comes down to, and that's how you know. You, you don't go by, I have a feeling like Mormons. Wait, when I took a... Um when I took a religion class in college, they said that there was only two direct quotes from Jesus throughout all of the books that in the Bible. So what are you what are you quoting? You gotta read the Bible for yourself and decide if that's true. I have, but it was just the that said it was people writing down the Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a big hubbub about that years ago. Uh, here's what I tell people. You know, I can't read the Bible for you. Right. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, you please tell me, because I got beat up by Mormons, because I primarily preached to the Mormon people. I, I got uh, some lady down, punched out 20-something, punched out my eye a couple years ago. I almost went blind. Wow. Um, so if I'm wrong, tell me and stop me, because I'd rather, you know, go have a beer right now and sit down and just watch TV all day. Right. Um, you read the Bible for yourself. You have to decide for yourself whether it seems creditable or not. Yes, people who claim to be with Jesus, Matthew and John, wrote down the Bible. Mark and Luke were after the fact. But, you know, we go by what reporters say, and they weren't there. And like you just said about O.J. Simpson. What you just said, did Jesus say, I am the Son of God? That's one of the quotes? Yeah. yeah. There's no question about it. And, and, and here's another way. As an engineer, I like to think you can come to the truth a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, I hate to call it a story, but one of the passages of the Bible in John Jesus makes the claim, basically in Hebrew, to be God. He says, before, before Abraham and Isaac, I am. And that is the name of God in, in Hebrew. Yeah. Immediately, Jews, the Jews there picked up stones to stone him. And you have to ask yourself, and he even asked them, why do you pick up stones to stone me? And their answer is, because you committed blasphemy. Well, no wonder, even if you and I don't understand the Jewish culture and what he just said, they got it. They want to kill the guy. And, and rightly so. If he is a blasphemer, if he's claiming to be God, which just didn't fit into their thinking, they, they thought God was going to be... When, when the Antichrist comes, if you don't become a Christian before then, when the Antichrist comes, he'll be everything you ever thought God in the flesh should be. He'll be some handsome-looking guy who will be charismatic. He'll be like Bill Clinton on steroids. You know, Ethel or Obama, would it take your pick? Everybody will follow him and think he's just the greatest thing. And yes, this is what God would look like if he were on earth today. But the Jews understood, and they wanted to kill him. So you can, you can come at it from a whole bunch of different ways. And you shouldn't believe it because I tell you, I could be wrong. You should believe it because you've decided on your own that yes, historically, this guy did come back from the dead. It's the central miracle of the Bible. After that, the virgin birth is easy. The worldwide flood is easy. You know, bringing a guy back from the dead, that's hard. That's, uh, that's the big thing. All right, you make me want to read the Bible. I will. Well? Listen, it was nice to meet you. Oh, thank you.